Hey YouTube, Tom with TK Designs here. Some of my subscribers have been asking what parameters I use whenever I configure my V-Carve inlays. So this video is going to go over those settings real quick for you. So first we have to obviously have the setting that we're going to v-carve. So here I'm just going to do a little bit of text and set that up. We'll get that centered on the workpiece. And we'll go ahead and configure a v-carve toolpath. So on the pocket side of things, I always use a start depth of zero millimeters and a flat depth of six millimeters. This gives us a nice little deep pocket in which to do our inlay. So if we look at what we have, we have a nice six millimeter deep pocket. Uh, that takes care of the pocket side of the inlay. Now let's go ahead and do the plug side. Uh, in order to do that, we're gonna create a new sheet Give it the same size parameters. We'll make it a little bit thinner. So I usually do my inlay plugs at about 20 millimeters in thickness. Go back up to our drawing. Highlight our inlay. Right click. Copy to sheet. And that will put our inlay for the plug side on there. Now we're going to take that vector and we're going to go ahead and flip that and center it into the workpiece. This way, once our carve is done, we'll be able to uh, flip the piece over and fit it into place. Now, very important, on the plug side, we need to hog out the material around our plug. So the best way to do that is to create an offset. Uh, do this if you're uh, using a bandsaw to cut around. If you, if you don't have a bandsaw and you need to hog out all the material, then I would recommend drawing a box the size of your uh, plug. But I do about a 15 millimeter offset. And that gives me plenty of room to work the bandsaw around. So now we're going to do our V-carve. We're going to highlight our offset and our plug subject. And we're going to start a V-carve. Now for this, I like to leave a glue gap of about one millimeter and in reality, once this is cut, it sticks out about a millimeter and a half above the top. I use my CNC to clear the material after the inlay is in, so this parameter works for me. If you want a little more of a gap at the top in order to allow for running it through a bandsaw or something like that, you can adjust the total depth of the parameter. But I like a, a depth that goes a total depth of seven millimeters. My hobby CNC is not very strong when it comes to doing full depth cuts. And if you attempt to do cuts, like if you did a zero and seven, what you'd see is that when this goes, 
it goes all the way down to seven. And it does it in one pass. Actually, let me... So, in order to combat this, going full depth in one pass, I like to make three passes. So, what I will do first is I will make my first plug at a 5 millimeter start depth and a 2 millimeter flat depth. This gives us our, our full 7 millimeters. And I will call that plug two. And I'm also going to create another with a start depth of three and a flat depth of two. And then finally our third tool path I'm going to do a depth of one millimeter and a flat depth of two. Once that's been done, I arrange them in numerical order, starting with the clearance sections and then with the V bit. So now if we execute these we'll see that we go about three millimeters at a time until we hit our final depth. This is much easier on the bits, doesn't destroy our bits, doesn't grab our workpiece and try to fling it across the room. So that's all there is to it. Once you've got this cut down, you'll have a nice little gap, just enough for your glue. And after glue up, you'll have a nice clean inlay. Uh, if you had, or if you enjoyed this video, please uh, like and comment. Uh, if you have any issues with it or if you have questions, please feel free to comment on the posts. I like to get back to answering those questions as quickly as I can. Uh, thank you for watching.